Hello, today I'm going to be showing you how to set up the NanoCore Rat. Now before I begin, I want to say I'm actually using the trial version. I don't own the software, so I'm not trying to get extra sales or anything like that. So first we open it, and when you first download it, you're going to get this file here. Whenever you run it, it's going to automatically download the rest of this stuff for you, so that's all done for you. So let's open this, it will have you sign into NetSeal. And here we are. First page, you're just going to have news and feedback. The thing about this is, by the time you see this tutorial, this is probably already going to be outdated, so let's move on. This is where all your installs or clients or whatever you want to call them, this is where they're going to show up. We don't have any yet, so... I'll come back to this later. So when you first go here to your system, this is all your settings. You're going to want to enable all of these plugins right here. If you look down here, it shows you exactly what they're doing. Like, add support for remote, remote desktop. Mm, sorry about my voice. Um, if you go up here to server settings, most of this you don't want to change. Because, like, this is just... Uh, hide the hide all this stuff up here in case that's getting in your way. Hide the icons over here. This one's the only one you might really have to worry about. This is in when you click X instead of closing, it's just gonna bring it to the system tray. And if you look down here, this one right here, this is your recover timeout. Whenever you try to recover passwords, say you're doing it on some really, really slow computer. If it takes longer than whatever amount of time that you have right here, it's just going to stop and not finish. So if you're working with really, really slow computers, you might want to make this a bit higher, like maybe 120. But aside from that, this is all just basic settings. And most of this you don't really need to change if you don't know what it is. Uh, the logs, we don't need to go over that, that's just logging the program. The builder, this is where we actually build our rat or virus or whatever you want to call it. Group, whenever you first run this and they first connect to you, this is going to show where they show up. Like you can have a group set for all the people you know, like all your friends and all they, all those guys, all their computers, they're going to show up in one spot but yet everyone else is going to show up somewhere else. Primary connection host. This is going to be your IP address, or your dynamic IP address, like it has an example here, your no IP address. Now because I'm just going to be infecting myself in this tutorial, I will just use the loopback address. And as a backup, in case for some reason this one stops working, like maybe noip.com, their entire website crashes and they go down. Well, you can have a second one here, so that way you don't lose all your installs. But again, since I'm not connecting online, we won't really need this. Connection port. This is the port that you're going to have to port forward if you're going to use this. So you can change it to whatever you need, like uh, dark comment is always 1604, so if you use that, you, you already know what I'm talking about. So just remember, if you keep it default, you need to port forward 9033. Skip user account control warnings. What this does, anytime, if you're on like a Windows Vista or a newer device, anytime you do something that's really important to the system, something that can affect the entire computer, you have to agree to, uh, what's it called, UAC. Okay, next we have the builder. Basically, this is just setting up your virus. The group, you can leave this in default and it won't hurt anything. This is just saying where all your bots are going to get sorted whenever you first connect. Like if you want all your family members to show up in one place, and all your friends to show up somewhere else, and all the random installs you got from some random form showing up somewhere else, you can do that. Your primary connection host, this is going to be your dynamic IP address, like no IP or DynDNS or whatever you're using. In this tutorial, I'm just using a loopback address. This will just connect it right back to myself because I'm going to be infecting myself. 
And this is a backup. If for some reason you're using your home.noip.biz and that one messes up, then you can have it send it to this other place. Really great feature. So your connection port, if you can see here, this is defaulted to 9033. Whatever port you use here is the one that your uh, rat's going to be connecting on, and this is the one that you have to port forward. You will need to port forward whatever this is. Skip user account control warnings. Now on anything Windows Vista and above, if you do anything that affects the entire system, like some of the rat's functions, it's going to ask the user for their permission. I'll give an example here. If I try to open Firefox as an admin, we get this here. And if they say no, then whatever you just tried to do, it's not going to work, and they have to say yes. So this will make it to where as long as they click it once, they'll never have to click yes again. It'll automatically do it. So I would highly recommend that if you need it. So you want to have both of those put together, because this will ask them when they first run it, do you want to run this as admin? So run when computer starts. This just your cryptor probably already has this function, but if not, you can use it here. Automatically starts the rat anytime that they start their computer. Advanced settings. This top one here, this will cause a blue screen of death anytime that they try to close the rat. Like if their antivirus removes it or something, it'll cause a blue screen and they restart their computer and it's right back. The zone identifier, this makes it to where like Windows smart screen, that sort of thing, helps get rid of that. Process control, this makes it to where it just helps protect the virus pretty much. Like it's harder to remove. Search local network for nano core servers. This will scan the LAN address and find any other nano core servers. <coughs> and let you connect to those. If you're not connecting through LAN, you really don't need this, but I am, so I, I might as well. Anytime the server runs into a problem, it'll try to restart it. So that's a good option, because instead of losing your bot, it's just going to restart it, and you might get it back. Now compile it as a 32-bit. Uh, this isn't really recommended, but sometimes it's required by certain cryptors. I don't know any that require this, but if for some reason your cryptor is just causing your file to completely screw up and not work, especially on 64-bit devices, I would try running this. <coughs> debug mode, you don't need that, that just gives extra information for the people that try to debug the client if anything goes wrong. Run delay. Right now if we build this virus and I run it, it's gonna come up and infect me. But I can set a delay for like say five minutes and then I run it and then nothing's gonna happen until five minutes later. It Not only does it help it stay FUD longer, less detections, but it's also good because your user may or may not remember where they got that virus. Assembly settings, you can change the icon here. I'm really not going to need that here, but again, this is good Like if you want to make it look like a picture or whatever. And it's good to set one even if you don't, just because it helps it stay FUD longer. Notifications. If you activate this, as soon as they run your virus and get infected, it's going to give them this message here. You can change this to whatever you want, like, ha, ah, you're infected, but whatever. You can just say whatever you want here. I usually don't use this, but if they do, this is what it's going to say. I'll leave it on just to show it. And surveillance X, this is, do you want keyboard logging? I always enable this because I like having key logs, but if you don't, there's your options for it. Builder logs, uh, whenever we compile this.
Okay, so now that we have this built, this is just telling you, this is all the log to the build in case something goes wrong, you can see what it is. And network, now that we have our virus built, and there it is, by the way. Now that we have this built, we're going to have to add that port. Now remember, by default, it's a 9033, but you can change this if you need to. And remember, you need to port forward this. If you don't know how to port forward, <coughs> you can try to use UPnB here, but eh, this doesn't always work. Because it just it's up to your router whether or not your computer has UPnB, or if it's enabled. So after we get this here, you're going to right click enable. So now you're listening on the port. And you can use their port checker to make sure it's working right. Alright, so let's run this virus. Alright, so here's our virus. Alright, I'm just gonna double click this. I'm sorry I said that twice. My I left my antivirus on. Since this isn't encrypted, it deleted it the first time. But anyways, I'm just gonna double click this and it's asking me, okay, do I get admin rights? Yeah, sure, why not? So, we get our message that we put up here, and now we have a connection. Alright, so if we right click here, we have all our options for the server. We can restart it, disconnect, shut it down, or completely uninstall it. System, we can reboot the computer or shut it down. Organize, we can have notes on each individual user. Trying to me like this is my laptop. Then you can always go back and check your notes. Alright, that's my laptop. Let's not do anything dangerous to that one. You can change the groups, change the identity, change what it's called, that sort of thing. Like if I want to change this to my laptop. Okay, much better name. Now we have a file browser, not implemented right now, but eventually it will be, and pretty much that's just like Windows Explorer. Task Manager, that's pretty self-explanatory. You can close whatever task you want. Like for example, my Mozilla Firefox I have here. Alright, so we have Mozilla Firefox, so if we go over here we can in that process and it closes so if you have admin rights this is pretty useful for like antivirus that sort of thing connections is going to show all the connections running on that uh, that computer like you can see here we have the nano core connection here registry editor I would not recommend messing with this unless you know what you're doing because you can really have some damaging effects to a computer. Remote console, if I remember this was not, okay, it is. <sighs> Sorry. This is just like CMD, like if I wanted to do any CMD commands like the IP config. There we go. It's just like having a command prompt window. Moving on. Create reverse proxying. <coughs> this pretty much lets you use one of your clients as a VPN. Can be useful. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Recover passwords. Now for, for my security, I'm probably going to end up blocking all of this out. But basically, whenever we run this, yeah, so. Any, like all my browsers, like Mozilla Firefox, as you've seen, all my passwords for that, anything saved, it's going to show up here. It's going to show what the password is, what the username is, the website that it's on, that sort of thing. And it also gives you email clients, like if somebody uses Microsoft Outlook or Mozilla Thunderbird, those sort of things. monitor keyboard and this is just your basic key logger so if I open notepad 
Hello, hackworms. If you can see, it shows up there. It shows me what the application it was and what the title of it was. So this will record anything you type in. Browse logs. Whenever you have the keyword, the offline keylogger on, or even the online one, really, it's going to save all of those keylogs, and you can use this to go back to them. Same thing with video and audio if you decide to save those. So I'm going to close this out because I don't want you guys seeing my face. But view live. All right, now right over here it's going to be blocked out, but that's just a video of my webcam. I can take a snapshot, I can change the image quality, change that all the way up, you can change the resolution all the way up to the full 1080. So let's close that because I'm tired of looking at myself. And same thing with the audio feed. Now instant message, this is pretty self-explanatory. It's just uh, messaging between you and your victim. Allow it to be closed. Hello. And now I have a message over here saying hello. Hi. Remote execute. If you have another file that you're wanting to run on their computer, like a paper install file or like a miner of some sort, or maybe even a, you want to have more multiple rats on this guy, you can upload it here and it will run it on their computer. Clear memory and clear processes, those are just for speeding up a computer. You can use the update to update it to the newest version of your nano core rat. In request elevation, you're currently running virus. If it's not an admin, this will try to get it admin rights. File transfers, anytime you try to send something or receive something, it's going to show up here. And thumbnails, this can automatically show desktop feeds or webcam feeds for all your connected clients. I hope I haven't missed anything, and I'm really sorry for Let's see, there's like two mess ups, and plus my voice is all weird because I've been sick. But if you have any questions, let me know. Like I said, I don't actually own NanoCore. I'm just using the trial version at the moment. I will probably buy it sometime soonish. But I will try to help you, anyways. And I'll do my best. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know.